Hello, 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 guys. Nice to see everyone here live. Tell me where you are from. Nice to see our fellows here. Mark, Kiboyf, Rogu, how are you? Patricia. Patricia is from our Portuguese community. Very nice to see her here after so many years. Kavita, Petra, nice to have everyone here with us. All right, guys. It's just me today. Sammy's here. Say hello for everyone, Sammy. Hi, everyone. How are you? Sammy uh, needs to finish a proposal. So she will, uh, she can't join us today. She is working and I'm here with you guys. <laughs> uh, of You're course. Too. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm working too, right? Yeah. So guys, Thank you so much for being here on this live event where we are going to talk about biophilic design and actually it's biophilic and I will always bring some insights related to sustainable design at the same time. So let's keep going. So what, what we have prepared for you guys here, right? We have this, this presentation that we have prepared and we will have uh, four main sections, right? We are going to have an introduction related to this subject. Then we are going to talk about biophilic designs. Uh, we will show the best insights related to this and show the next steps uh, for, you, for you also, okay? So once again, uh, thank you everyone for joining. My name is Philip, I am from Ugreen, this uh, sustainable uh, design company that we have this consultancies, we have our courses, we have the green certification. That is our process for, to, to certify professionals who wants to make sustainable design since the first step. And we do, we make this live events usually every two weeks. In every two weeks, we make a special event such as this ones to present some new strategies, some things that are going on related to sustainable design. One thing that we are doing also, every day I'm opening a live event here on this channel and discussing new subjects related to sustainability, to new technologies that we are seeing and that will have an impact on the way that we live and the way we do things. So be sure to, be, to go to our channel here every day. You will have a new live session and you can join us also. It's very uh, early in the morning. Maybe you, one of you guys will not uh, be woken up since we are in South America. But take a look in our channel. We are always presenting new stuff. We have the Sustainable Architecture Animated Glossary. This is our free content that, that we are sharing in our channel as well. So we are trying our best to really catalyze this movement and put everyone into the, the path of sustainable design, right? Sustainability and all those things. So every day in new content in our social media and Instagram, we are on TikTok as well. I'm dancing there on TikTok. Maybe you can see me dancing on TikTok. I'm just kidding. It's the same content that on Instagram is on, on TikTok, our drawings, our new things that we are creating there. So today we're going to talk about sustainable design. So just to give you an introduction, right? So this is the theme, biophilic and sustainable architecture, right? Biophilic plus sustainable architecture. And what are the goals that we have here for you guys? Okay, so I'm going to show the best set of biophilic design strategies. So we are going to show 60 strategies. I don't know if you saw our Instagram, we posted this in our channel. Let me just present that for you. One second, I have created this drawing here. And here we have this biophilic design and we have some some stretches here if you pause the video and keep going and looking you will see animal patterns prospect any refuge tubular forms these are all biophilic design strategies that you can use in your projects right so we brought this for everyone so external views these are some possibilities that you can bring for biophilic design so filtered and diffuse light diffuse light fractals at the beginning of the video we have some more so we brought this drawing for people there to, to understand more about the concepts. But the thing is, we have more than 60 strategies, uh, 70 strategies actually, related to biophilic design. So I will try to show the best of the 70s 
what are the most um, exciting and related to sustainability, in my opinion. So it's not going to be the 70s, but there will be a lot of strategies there. Then we are, we are going to understand how to connect the biophilic design with sustainability. This is something that we are going to, to show as well. So the most prominent mistakes also uh, the designers make when they are trying to apply nature in their design. So I will present some common mistakes that usually people do. What biophilic design, uh, which right, biophilic, uh, biophilic design techniques um, can you use right, to get more uh, clients for a practice? This is a, a bonus that we are going to give. right. It's, Things that your clients maybe will be happier for you to use. So this is uh, this is interesting. How to improve professional recognition by using these strategies as well. And guys, what do you think related to your goals? What are the things that is going to be more important for you here related to all those strategies here? So you can tell me in the chat, okay, will be stretchy. Uh, number one, strategy number two, three, four, five. Just tell me the chat to see if we are in the same page. How to connect biophilic design with sustainability. Hey, Sonia, how are you? Sonia is the the quickest. Uh, how how can can say what you're doing is hard to do? Ask you, Sonia. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, let's keep going. So, uh, what, uh, Sonia is the quickest person who handles the gun and shoots uh, in the, the Wild West, right? So, this is the. Just to say this, let's keep going. And so, let's see two, two, two. Yeah, everyone wants to have two, right? This is the main theme of our. Of our this connection between sustainability and biophilic design. So nice to know um, about this. Adrian, Adrian is here as well. Hello, Adrian, how are you? Let's keep going. So context. Architecture with sustainable futures uh, have never been more in demand before, especially in the commercial sector. So of course, this is something interesting because we are seeing right with the ESG, with many things that people need to comply related to sustainability these companies they are bringing more this idea of okay we need to present people that we are changing we are making right things and we are part of this changes right i i have lots of opinions about it when when companies they are trying to embrace sustainability to to say they are doing something right some companies are actually improving but some some of these companies are not but we are part of this movement, right? And of course, as professionals, we need to do our best on the subject. So of course, when we understand, for example, we made a, a project uh, one year ago for L'Occitane, right? And this company uh, went to us, we started talking and they said, we want to create a something special related to sustainability on this store. This will be a very, important store here in Sao Paulo, right? Sao Paulo is the biggest uh, city from Curitiba, from Brazil, right? I live in Curitiba, but Sao Paulo is the biggest city. And then we created this sustainable interior design project. I, I, I just um, presented a, a dialogue simulation of this project. Let me just open that. I will open my dialogue simulation here. Just one second, it's opening. And, but the thing is, these companies are looking for professionals that want to develop, are into this field of sustainability because they need to evolve and they need to present for most people they, they are doing the right things. So this can help people uh, who are starting, for example, people who are starting their, their career and also those people who are looking for differentiations, right? So I want to bring something different on the table and understanding these concepts of merging biophilic design and sustainability, it will be important for, for them. However, uh, many people get lost on how to use this concept. Sometimes people say, okay, I will bring lots of plants inside of, of a space. This is a common mistake that people do. And they say, okay, I will bring these plants and I, I will improve my space. But the thing is, 
Sometimes they are bringing uh, too many plants and maybe they are decreasing the quality of the, you know, light in the space because they are not calculating this. They are just bringing many plants and they are saying, okay, my, my space uh, be became more sustainable, but then people are removing uh, natural light inside the space. So this is a very simple idea here that I'm bringing just to illustrate this. So this little, con this concept, sometimes people can mess up with a little bit. And maybe in relation uh, to application of nature, right? So this is something that we need to, to, to understand. And sometimes nature is applied, as we were telling, in sustainability is lost. So this idea, bringing so many plants into space, maybe you are closing some, you know, air entrings, or you are closing natural light inside the space. So very simple concept, I think you can understand about it. And so we need to balance beauty, mental stimulation, health, sustainability. We need to balance all those things. We have some people that talk about biophilic design and sometimes they, they are telling about this, they are describing these concepts and people say, okay, this is, this is so important. Talk about biophilic design. They are specialists in biophilic design, but they don't understand these concepts related to sustainable design. Sometimes they understand a few of these concepts, but we need to balance all those things to make truly good projects. So do you agree, guys? Uh, if you can uh, tell me here in the chat, I would love to know what, your, what you, is your take on that. So let's see. If you have a problem, guy, with the Wi-Fi connection, just press F5, go near to your Wi-Fi and increase the quality of your YouTube transmission. Okay, usually the, the issue is in your end, right? So guys, tell me uh, if you understand this idea of balancing this and tell me guys what is your profession as well right why while i'm explaining some more things here if you are an architect if you are an interior designer if you are an engineer please tell me or, or if you don't belong to any of these professionals i would like to know as well and this practice of course put this into practice it will help you right so this this is my ideas for the next steps and just tell me what is your profession? And maybe your main challenges you can say as well about this concept. Okay. So architecture, architecture, urban planning, sustainability consultant and training. Yes. Sonia, you are making a, doing a great job. Architect, Peter, let's see some more people here. I'm an architect. Yes. Nice to know guys. People who are a little uh, later, you can still write and we will be reading this. So let's take a look on the main subject here, biophilic design. Okay, so I don't know if I'm speaking too fast. I, I prefer to go fast than, you know, be too, um, I, I want to really enter into the, the main topic here. This is what I want you to deliver to you guys. So guys, we have uh, 72 possible stretches to using projects and usually they fall into these categories here. It's important to say we have two main uh, main authors when we talk about biophilic design. We have Kellert and we have Salingaros. And Salingaros has an, an, an approach related to biophilic design and Kellert has another. And Kellert brings this 70 concepts uh, separately and selling arrows brings this into 14 patterns. So these concepts are inside of these 14 patterns, but we're going to have the Kellert approach, right? So we'll just uh, describe here Kellert approach. So if you want to know more, you, I suggest you to read Kellert and he has a, a he has a, a, some good books related to this theme, okay? So we have this six main ways to, to deliver biophilic design, right? And you can see here we have 12 strategies, 11, 12, 14, 11, 12. So we have many categories when we talk about biophilic design. And I want to explain these categories first and then we can enter some of these strategies, right? So this is the main thing here. 
And just to explain the main idea, so we have environmental elements. So what it is environmental elements? This is our, the simplest thing to, to understand about biophilic design is, is the most easy, uh, the, the easiest, yeah. So environmental elements, uh, it's related to really natural things that you can do, for example, uh, use plants, use fire, use natural colors, use water. These are all nature elements that you bring to your design and you are getting a more biophilic design. So this is the simplest concept here. Then we go to natural shapes. Natural shapes are shapes that you can use to make your design improve towards biophilia. So for example, you can use a shape of an egg on part of your project. Okay, so you look at, at the shape and you say, it seems like an egg, it seems like a nest, it seems like a tube, for example. So this is something that you find in nature. Okay, this is a shape. So you have 11 strategies considering this. Then we go to patterns and natural process. So things that happens in nature, patterns that we find in nature and we can replicate to our, in our project. So for example, we can use uh, bamboo, right? When we use bamboo, bamboo is going to grow. So this growing thing, this feeling of growing, will be a strategy that is related to biophilia because you are seeing plants grow inside your space. It's a, something that you, s you feel that time is passing by, so it's a good strategy, for example. Then you can use, for example, some textures on the wall, right? Some textures that you find in nature, and these, these textures, textures you will see, and you will say, okay, this is nice. And you're not actually thinking about it, but your new cortex is thinking about it, you know, and you are thinking about something else, but you are just looking at the pattern, it, it is capturing your attention, right? You are looking at this, and it's capturing your attention. It's, feeding your brain with background information. So this is a, a good idea to use as well. Then we proceed to light and space. What is light and space? The idea is I want to see time passing by and light is one of the, you know, the, the biggest thing that we can find in nature to, that shows the passing of time. Is not your clock. Your clock came a little later than this. So you are, you know, you woke up, you see light, depending on, the, if you are a normal person, you, you wake up early, you will see sun shining, you will see time passing by. So you will be connected to the planet by seeing this, this light passing by, right? So this is a, a thing that is going to reinforce your cicada rhythm so this is going to be something very nice and there are many stretches that you can use to improve this feeling of this connection with the world right so light and space is this then we have relationships of place so for example here we are talking more about cultural connections historical connections so if you find a type of architecture that reminds something vernacular or maybe you are bringing this possibilities of seeing some historical building. So these connections with culture, it brings us curiosity. You start thinking about the past, about the present, about the future, and this is something that puts you also connected with nature. And then this last one are the most, I think the most complicated to understand. It's not that complicated, but considering all those, these are, these are something very simple to understand in my opinion, but this is the most complicated. And the evolved human nature, nature relationships are things more related to the feeling, right? So privacy, refugee, uh, spiritual connection with a space, even fear. When you have a fear of something, it, you can bring these possibilities in your project. And to, to describe this connection between biophilic design and sustainable design, we need to see these strategies in connection so, and, and see each strategy separately. So we are going to take a look on that, okay? So below we will see some of these strategies here related to this category. So you can see the categories are here, more described. And here we are going to open and see more of these examples, okay? Guys, could you understand this part here, the 72 strategies? 
just to make sure that you understood the general idea, then we can proceed and enter on the, the, on the actual strategies. Let's see, let's wait for people. Let's keep going. So, all right, people are, are very, um, they, you are more connected than the last class when we talked about building decarbonization. Actually, this class is still, it's still on, on our channel. So you can uh, watch this class. We talked about building decarbonization, a very cool um, concept. But biophilic design, usually people get more interested in this. Nice to, to know that you are enjoying it. I'm enjoying. Hey, Rosatini, nice to see you here. Rosatini got, uh, fa found me in my crazy live events that we do, then I opened randomly. Nice to have you here with me once again. Okay, guys. So yeah, people uh, got the idea, nice. So if you couldn't get something, you will understand more by seeing this on detail. So let's keep going. Okay, guys, so we have environmental elements. This is the first that we were talking were more related to the, this, this uh, things that we find in nature. So for example, plants. We have here one example, right? So you can use plants in your space. You can see a space that is using some plants here. You can see this, these plants, is, uh, they are artificial plants. They are not natural. And I brought this on purpose because you can use natural, but you can use artificial. Of course, natural will be much better because you have other things, not just the, you know, not just the, the view of the plant. You have the smell, you have this plants getting older, you see time passing by, so it will be a, a much richer experience by, by using natural, but you can use that as well, right? There is, uh, I just brought some curiosity here. Maybe if you already know us for, for a uh, longer time, you, you may think, right? Maybe you already know the answer about this. Maybe you can say here in the chat, do plants eliminate VOCs, right? Maybe you can, you can say yes or no. What do you think, guys? It, it, it eliminates VOCs. You can tell me if you, think it eliminates or not? Just a curiosity to open a, a parenthesis here in the class. I think it's a good curiosity because people say that plants can, can help on, on eliminating VOCs. So, okay, so let's find out so, something interesting about it. There was a, a rumor in 1989 called Insure Landscape Plants for Air Pollution Abatement. This was, was a study created by NASA. And here you can see that we were talking that at that time, right, they studied ways to eliminate VOCs, such as benzene, formaldehyde, and trichloran. Yeah, I can't speak that. I'm sorry. This is, uh, this is uh, below my limits, right? Tri Tricrolinethylene, yeah, you, you, you read this and you can say, you yourself. yeah, thanks, Amy. I'm trying my best. So, of course, it is important, right? We, we can, we can uh, reduce VOCs when we don't, have no, we don't have natural ventilation. So when you are on the spaceship, right, you are flying on the spaceship across you know, a, a distant galaxy, a galaxy far away, you can use, right, plants to, uh, to eliminate, right, some toxics in your space. But the thing is, VOCs are not eliminated simply with filters, and they, they found this, right? So NASA researchers added that to effectively purify the air, a person will need at least one house plant per 100 square meters. And this was published, right? And since then, people think, people believe that plants can really clean VOCs. And it can, but you know, the density on what we need of plants to really decontaminate the space, it's too big. And actually, we we need to have right uh, no natural ventilation natural ventilation in the space so this is something important to understand because 
NASA wasn't the wrong way they say something about it, right? These guys are clever, right? They are from NASA, right? So we can say, okay, NASA tell, tell the wrong thing, but people read this and they made the wrong assumptions related to this. So, and people read and they start replying over the internet and then we think, okay, this is nice, right? We we kind of we want that to 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 really happen, right? But this is not entirely true. So I just wanted to bring this this um, so to to remove this this um, this concepts that we uh, sometimes we we get, right? So of course, using plants is not something wrong. Of course, right? Spending time with house plants will remove stress, will reduce anxiety, plants on the environment brings physical health, right, will increase physical health, add a plant to your bedroom can result, result in better sleep, ability for, uh, to sleep for longer periods. So there are many great things here. And they can do some cleaning in some bacteria, some mildew or dust. So. They are still beneficial, but not the way people uh, think they can remove toxics. And actually, we at Tree Green in 2016, we said in an article that plants could remove VOCs because we got this idea from someone who got from NASA and we, okay, this guy is telling that NASA said, maybe, right, it's true. So we, we started to make our research is in a more deeper level when we saw this mistake happening and we were kind of responsible to spread that to spread that in the, in the 2016 when we started Ugreen. So this is something nice that you understand, right? Separate those things and really have the correct answer. Okay guys, so plants is the first thing, natural materials, right? So you can have um, you know, many people have an aversion to, to artificial materials, right? So natural, like stones, for example, it's something that we will welcome in our spaces, right? Everyone likes when you have a natural material like a stone or something like it. So, but it's important to understand the connection with sustainability when we talk about it. So, for example, uh, when we are getting a material for a project, we need to make sure that these materials are extracted, they are sourced, they are manufactured, they are, they have this close, right? The, the entire process is made close to your project situation, right? Because sometimes you are bringing a material that is nice, but it's coming from, from a place that is too far away. So there is lots of fossil fuels that are, is going to be emitted by trucks. Or maybe the the material actually is a is a local material, but the processing of this material is far away. So the material goes to to the sp uh, space that is in your city, goes to a, an industry far away, and goes back. So understanding the entire process of those materials is crucial to develop a better design, right? So understanding the extraction process, the manufacturing process. It's important. And here we are talking just about the regionality of those materials, but we can understand more about the extraction practices, how these materials are being processed, right? People are, are using a, a fair uh, work. For example, some months ago, we have this uh, very rich families here in my country that is the Salton family, right? And they, they make wines, very fancy wines and things like this. And then they discovered that they, they were hiring slaves, actually, to, to cultivate those wines, right? So here we, I'm just typing on Google here, Salton. When you type Salton, you see uh, Trabalho Escravo is, is slave work. So they found things like this. People were sleeping in conditions like this. Right, so this is something very sad, and when we are talking about the things that we consume in our everyday basis, and here I'm talking about wine, it's something different, but they found people in this situation here, the police found these people here. So very rich families producing wine with the finest quality, right, and families, right, this is the, the, the daughter of the owner telling, Surname doesn't guarantee a job. 
say, say the, the, the hair of Salton family. And so this is something that happens, guys. These are crazy things that can, can happen. And we need to be more careful on the things that we consume, and not just the things that we drink, we eat, but the things that we are consuming in our daily basis, right? The materials that we use in our building. Sometimes you have a good material, you are looking at this material and you are saying, this is a sustainable material, this is amazing, but you don't know the behind the scenes. So ask for documentations related to uh, extraction, right? Uh, manufacturing. The, the process of manufacturing, right? right? Maybe the, the product is sustainable, but the manufacturing process is, is making too many emissions. Here uh, we have Sammy, Sammy right? My, my partner at Chew Green, and we have Wellington. Wellington is, is in another uh, state now, developing a work related to life cycle assessment of materials. So this is a work that we do. We, uh, we analyze the entire chain of a material and understand which part of the process maybe it's not that sustainable, how we can improve this to make this entire process more sustainable. So this is something that you can uh, analyze as well with some softwares and things like this. And then we have the ingredients. Let's say you have a sustainable material that it was produced in a good way, and then you bring these ingredients that may be a chemical that can harm your health over time, lots of VOCs maybe. So these are, are things that can happen when we talk about materials. And one tip that I will bring you guys, you can uh, write down this website. It's this website here called Beauty Transparency. So here you can find many different materials. Let me just share this a little bit very quickly here. I'm talking here in English about Salton family, okay? I don't dare to talk that in Portuguese. We are going to have a live event in Portuguese today also, so I won't say this in Portuguese. Okay, it's taking that time to, to sign in. But take a look on this website here, guys, Beauty and Transparency. You will find many ways to find sustainable materials there. So this is something that I suggest. So let's keep going with the, the content here. So natural materials is a way that you can use views. Here you can see, right, guys, uh, we were talking about biophilic design, and we just entered in too many different zones when we, you know, when we start thinking about sustainability and all those things at the same time. So this is very something very interesting to think. Lots of three-dimensionality on the subject. Okay, so ex environmental elements, views, and here we can see, right, this, this project was developed by my wife. You can see her here. So she's looking up, to looking the, the space. And then we have some views here on that. So we have many views related to this tree here. So this is in, in open with glazing only. So we needed to analyze um, uh, energy efficiency of this project before developing this because there was too many glazing and we, we kind of have a, a fear about it. So these are possibilities. This is a project that I have developed almost 10 years ago, actually. And here we see, right, the, the views, the possibility of, of having views to the outside. This is a part of the project that was LEED certified and a certified gold level. And here we needed to create a, um, fulfill the credit that we have is, is called quality views. And when we say about quality, quality views on LEED certification, let's see if we can find this credit here, quality views. So to achieve this credit on LEED certification, you can see here, we need to achieve a direct line to the outdoors via glazing for 75% of all regularly occupied floor area. So we need to find this, we need to find this multiple vision glazing sites uh, at least 90 degrees apart. We need to have the views for flora, fauna, sky, movement. So these are things that 
you know, you have a view to the outside. Here, I'm, I'm very connected to the outside. I don't know if you can see cars passing by here. We are very happy working in this space. We just see a very ugly blue house there, right, Sammy? Yeah. So, this is... It's, it's a store, yeah. It's yeah. A clothing store. But this is a, a very nice view that we, we got yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. We are going to to open a fund, fundraising here in the chat to to repaint that to a a better color because this blue is so ugly. Okay, so let's keep going. So you understood. You you can find these views and achieving these views. You have this study here called Windows um, and Offices: A Study of Office Worker Performance in the Indoor Environment. This is a PDF that you can download. Let me try to find that for you. Yeah, green planted facade. Sonia is, is better than us. I mean, we are, we are, t we are telling to repaint this. Sam is telling, uh, Sonia is telling to, to just put a, a, some green walls. This is a good idea. So here we can find this. Uh, this is the PDF, I think. We can find here. Yeah, this is the, the report. You can read that also. I will, sh I will share these studies here in the chat. So just bring this as a something else for you guys. And here you can see, right, we, we find some, let me try to find a, the picture that shows this. It stretches off views here. Here it is, right? So we want to lead tells a view factor of three or greater. And when it says something like it, it's related to this, right? We don't want to have view one. Who wants to have this, right? This very unfortunate. It, it got me idea to bring a, a animation for our Instagram. These animations that we are doing here, guys, we are creating these animations for our Instagram channel. I will create this other one here. And I will create an animation related to this. And if you comment, um, Comment, I knew it. I will reply you there on Instagram because you, uh, I will know that you were in the class here. So I will create an animation there of this on the next week. So view one, view two, view three, we can see that's, that this is more open, right? View four is better, and view five even better. But we want to see the time passing by as we were talking. So views, this is something that we can have. Green facades, so as Sonia was telling, right? Uh, we should follow the things that we teach here. So use a green facade. Uh, they provoke interest and satisfaction. So this is a possibility, the U University of Michigan. So we have a green facade here. And this is a project that my friend Paula has done here in my city. It's called Mariana Torres Corporate. This is a elite certified building as well. And here you can see these green facades. This is something that I, I enjoy this because we have lots of variation, right? This is not just a simple, just one way green facade. We have some variations of plants, uh, dimensions as well. So this is something very cool. Oh, guys, you need to comment on Instagram, okay? Comment on Instagram. Uh, when, when I post this next week, not, not now, you, 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 you don't need to say it now here. But you know, right? So, okay. So this is it. So this is the green facade, a great strategy to use. Then we have colors, right? So colors, natural colors such as this. We can find this examples here, right? Natural, natural, natural. This is something that you can use. Th these are the palette that we suggest as a basis, but we have more colors. Okay. Let's keep going. So, guys, these, these are the environmental elements. Could you understand this? Please tell me in the chat. Maybe, guys, I, I prefer to open more parentheses and expand more the content than just, you know, bring pictures. Okay, this is it, this is it, and done. Maybe we're going to make a two-part class on this. I think it's going to be better and we can breathe a little more, okay? People are laughing here, Adrian, Robo, nice to, to have you guys here. Hey, Nanad, how are you, man? Nice to have you here again. Justus, 
you're welcome also. Petal, I, I don't know if I said Petal, I think I said hello to Petra. I'm sorry, Petal, I didn't say hello yet. Uh, tell me we, we, which one of you have got, uh, are entered the live event now, right? It would be nice to be uh, with us. Uh, nice to have you guys with, with us here. The newcomers and the, the oldest fellows. Okay, guys, so let's keep going. I think I will go until natural patterns and process and we can open a second class and maybe Sammy can be with us in this yes, net. Please. Yeah, Sammy is missing you guys. So let's keep going. Natural forms, here we can see, now it's going to be more interesting in my opinion. It gets more and more interesting, more complex and more and more feelings and related to the emotions. I think this is nicer to understand. So several elements related to natural forms will talk about the use of materials, but therefore they need to emphasize, uh, we need to emphasize sustainability, right? So we are going to bring this element. As I said, we have three, four, five, six. When we talk about the, here we have 14 stretches. Oh, 11, I'm sorry. So we are going to bring the six that I, I really encourage you to understand. We have biomimetics, right? Biomimetics is the, this idea to use, for example, um, we can borrow adaptations that we can find in nature, right? Uh, in, with considering other species, so shells, crystals, webs, beehives. So this is something that we can use. The spiral as well. So this is another possibility of, uh, related to biomimetics. Here in our Instagram channel, you can find, let me try to find some biomimetic concepts here. Let me, I will bring this YouTube channel. Guys, I have this, uh, we, we are creating the Sustainable Architecture Animated Glossary. And today we have posted this related to biomimicry. So let me just open this. And you can see me, oh, propaganda. Let's wait for the propaganda. So here we can see me explaining on this video here, the inspiration related to this building in Zimbabwe, right? The Eastgate Center in Zimbabwe. And it's using, right, natural ventilation. So, uh, cold, cold and fresh air is entering the building and let me try to open this in a better way. Just one second. I think I have the original video here. I think it will be nice to explain for you guys here on the, on the actual. Yeah, I think it's going to be better this way. So here we have this, this animation here, right? We can see the, the winds flowing. So I will just add the repetition here. So the winds are going up and entering the building and we are removing this hot air. So this is a sustainable design strategy that we brought related to the termite mount, right? So this is something that has this inspiration, right? And we can bring this inspiration on nature related to shapes. Just related to shapes is going to evoke by the design, but we can actually use systems to bring that in and increase um, sustainability on the space. So biomimetics for sustainability, not just for aesthetics. You can use for aesthetics as well, it's nice, but we can improve that even more. So improve, you see the cold air going and becoming hot air and the termite, termite mounts can do the same, okay? So this is biomimetics. I hope you have, uh, enjoy this and in our channel we are bringing this other videos here related to sustainable design so all these glossaries we are bringing here you can see we have some few already scheduled so keep going new things every day here in our channel we are crazy developing contents here so biomimetics then we can have this other stretches here that are column trees and supports and we can see here this picture, right? So this is from Pinterest, we got from Pinterest. And 
a sincere plaza, Woods Bagot, and you can see here this possibilities. So this you are evoking nature by using something like it. And here we have something else that is fractals, right? We can have this interconnection between shapes. We are creating a fractal structure here as well. And I, iPads. iPads are not uh, biophilic. It, it can be if you draw biophilic drawings on iPad, maybe. So column trees and supports, it's another possibility. Then we can find animal patterns, right? So maybe the simulation of we can use, of course, you can have a dog in your house. This will be <laughs> very uh, nice. But you can use uh, the simulation of this. So you can maybe uh, create a drawing, as we were showing here on, the, on this drawing, right? So this animal pattern that we have created here. Let me pause here, right? We have this fish, something like a fish. You see this and you say, this is a fish, right? You, you understand this. And if you understand that this is a fish, you have this, you have activated biophilia in your, in your space. Then you can use other uh, possibilities. You can use shells and spirals. So these are possibilities as well. So simulations of invertebrate, in, invertebrate creatures such as the spider webs, right? So you can use this. And the concept will come with this idea of bringing these biological elements. So this is on, on I forgot, uh, the Vatican, right? The Vat Vatican... Uh, San Pietro Cathedral in Vatican. And this is when you leave the space. So you have this feeling of a shell, right? This is a, is a very beautiful space. And another, the shell, right? Shell brings many, you can see, we brought the biomedics here and you can bring shells and spirals as well as other possibilities. Then we can have also oval and tubular shapes. So here we can see, for example, uh, interiors, facades, external landscaping. We can use something like uh, a nest shape, a neck shape, a, a tubular shape. So these are, are things that you can bring. And when you bring this, it evokes nature as well. So another possibilities. Then we have natural botanical patterns. So here we can see some other patterns. So I, we always bring this example because this is very nice to understand. This is in an in a airport in the US. I forgot if it's, uh, I think it's JFK um, Nixon Airport. Yeah, I think it's Nixon Airport in, in, in New York, if, if I'm not wrong. And here you can find this this um, patterns, right? We can see these patterns that reminds us of trees or leaves. And this is not something that, you know, you can see lots of metal here, but when you see this, it evokes nature as well because you're seeing the shapes and this complexity. Sometimes you are just, you know, passing by, you are not really thinking about this, but you are thinking about life. But, you know, the space is, it's bringing you, you know, um, I forgot the name. Uh, it, it brings you uh, not, not inspiration, not, not, it's not the word, but it's stimulus. You, it's, it's stimulating you somehow, right? Because you, when you have just this white space, minimalistic white space, you are not being, you know, stimulated. And it's important to stimulate our brains. It's healthy, right, to have this. So we have this natural forms, okay? So this is the second part. Could you understand this, guys? Natural forms, please tell me here in the chat while I drink a coffee here. Yeah, Peter, yeah, this is it. Yeah, golden angle, yeah. And that said golden angle. Yeah. Okay. The double glass in the windows are a good option depending on the situation. You need to consider uh, acoustics. 
sometimes I wish we had here in our facade because sometimes we have here in our country, I don't know in yours, we have some, you know, very noisy cars and motorcycles. People want to know that, wants to make people know they are passing by. I don't know if it happens in your in your country, something like it. I'm passing by it and I want the world to know about it. <laughs> Sam is laughing because I was, uh, yesterday I was recording some things here and I was crazy with, you know, people passing by here. Okay. Hey, Catherine. I, I don't think it's raining more in London than here. Here we have a bad weather for four days now. Very ugly weather, right? So very cloudy day. I mean, I'm going with, uh, here at, at the office with a bike some days, but it's harder to, to, to do that. I'm using a bike. It's not that, that good these days. Okay, so Mark, it will be recorded, okay? We're going to keep the session live for a few days. Don't worry, okay? So let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, we will see this part three here, and then the rest we are going to see in other class, okay? So just to, to finish this part of the lesson here, and then we can proceed with the part two of that. Because I think if I rush too much, we are going to miss many important things. I want to open parentheses and bring more sustainable elements and really expand the content that we have here to give for you guys. So we have here, for example, growth and affluences. So what is this, right? Here we can see this space. And here we can see, for example, this bamboos, right? So bamboo is something that is going to grow and grow and grow and grow and it grows really fast in four years you can find um, a very you know it's achieving a uh, uh, high yeah it's on uh, how, how can I explain we you really achieve this kind of maturity on the on the bamboo in four years so it grows really fast. And when you see something growing really fast in the space, you see time passing by. So this brings a feeling of, you know, of connection with nature. But of course, when we are talking about plants, we need to think about native and adaptive plants. This is something hard for us to teach at Ugreen sometimes because every city you have your own native, native and adaptive plants. Here in our city, we have some. But here in our country, we don't have a database. For example, in the US, you have ladybird, um, plants, let's see. Uh, it's called ladybird, and then you have a database of plants on this website called ladybird something, I forgot the name here, but here in our country, we don't have anything like it. So you need to, you know, keep, um, you need to go, usually what I suggest is that you go to your city hall and by going there you, you can find the environmental sector of your city hall and talk there to, uh, to discover which plants people use there and because the, usually the city hall wants to use plants they, that they don't require too much maintenance. So this is a, a good tip because we know that we are talking with many countries that don't have uh, resources uh, as we don't have, right? So. It's a, a good idea, but if you have a database or something, it's something nice that you can analyze or talk with people who are dealing with plants, of course, it's another possibility, to really decrease the amount of ir irrigation that you can have in your space. Be because irrigation is uh, a big issue. Many people use lots of irrigation. They think they, when they, uh, they have, uh, you know, lots of plants in their space in a very healthy state. They think they are evoking sustainability, but they are using lots of water for this. So uh, you can save water by using those stretches. Uh, even that, depending on the country that you, that you are, for example, here we have the agricultural sector that uses much more water than we use in our homes, and they don't care they just don't care about it and this is fine for them 
but we I think we need to do our part even considering these issues right we need to do our part dynamic balance is intention this is something that we can uh, create as well right in our building so this is something I think this is too exaggerated but it's a you know, just to, to show the, the ideas, you can create some tensions. You can, for example, create a balance uh, in your project that, you know, how it's, it's, it stands up. Be careful why are we using this, but this is something that you can use as well. Create this tension about styles, right? This is something that is evoking something crazy okay what is happening here right this is something that evokes a surprise so this is a possibility when we talk about biophilic designs okay guys so these are the three parts here i don't want to expand that uh too much because i want to expand more light in space on when we are talking about sustainability i want to really expand to maybe bring some simulations some possibilities on how we can uh, use this sorry how we can use this in a better way so let's keep going with the content okay so part two we're going to schedule this keep watching our channel and we're going to schedule this part two but let's uh talk a little bit more here about some goals right do you think guys this ideas can help in your goals to develop more sustainable and biophilic designs maybe i can expand a few concepts here if you want to to if you have some questions, I can expand that a little more. I will be happy to do this as well. Okay. So let's see if you have any questions or if it helped you in your goals. It would be nice to know. And guys, I think uh, we could bring some insights related to biophilic design, right? I think we could show some ways to connect design with sustainability right some of the mistakes that usually people do right we we didn't say too much about the mistakes but i think you could understand uh, the general idea about it and some techniques that you can use of course so we brought some i think one of the best techniques ways to improve professional recognition this is a result a final result of all those things that we are using but i think recognition is something that is something it's something that happens naturally in the process right and while doing the, the the right things and i think i could explain maybe i will explain more even more in the next class but here we could understand more about healthy and sustainable spaces right this uh okay we can bring more health in our spaces considering to biophilia and sustainability at the same time and we can't you know sacrifice healthy you know, using sustainability and sacrifice health and vice versa. So this is something that is interesting. Biophilic space that generates sustainability and sometimes you are making some mistakes related to this. And some possibilities that it can harm health as well, right? As we were talking about natural light there. And you have seen also some ways that you can create more healthy, more sustainable interiors. I think this is something that we could bring you use nature with more purpose not randomly i think you could understand that this is something important just let me just explain a little more about those things you don't need to use all things to make a good design you can bring some of these strategies separately sometimes you can't have all the possibilities to to make this so to you know to to bring some strategies so you you need to have this as a personal you know repertoire of strategies okay i will bring this i will bring this and this other and together i can make something very special and have this in your mind right this really have these strategies with you and use this wisely to evoke this it will be it will make your spaces much more interesting and i think this is very nice to to have this knowledge then we can proceed right so it's important to think about architecture realistically and use this knowledge in your favor right so guys i will bring some some possibilities for you guys here to accelerate your results today we didn't open something like this for a for a 
I think we opened this April of the last year, so it's something very special. And if you want to go further, go deeper on the next steps, we can you can uh, proceed with us. And we are going to open the possibilities to enter in our Platinum Access today, okay? So what is the Platinum Access? Is the possibility, right, to, you can have access to our complete content portal with our best courses at True Green. So what we do at True Green, we have many different courses. We have the Sustainable Interiors, we have the Green Script, we have the Biophilic Design Blueprint, that is our course related to Biophilic Design. Green script is related to sustainable design. We have the sustainable interiors. All these courses you have here, right? So the Lead Green Associate course related to lead certification, the Green Hero Community classes, and then we have some smaller courses as well that we it, it, it's part of, of this access. So for example, when you enter here for the sustainable interiors, you can get this course, you can enroll in the course, and you will have a pricing of these courses. So for example, the Sustainable Interiors is $697. It's a 50 classes course that you can have. The Green Script is other. When you enter here on the Green Script, you can read it all, right? Understand everything that the course has. When you click here, you go to the course and you can uh, purchase this also for this pricing right let's wait for the the website to run it's delaying a little bit let's let me open the biofield design blueprint and just click here delete green associate course Yeah, so you have the, the leading associate, we have the Green Hero Community classes as well. So every, of the, every one of these courses, the Green Script is $697, Sustainable Interior is $697, the Biofield Design Blueprint $397, then you have the Lead Green Associate, the Green Hero Community classes. So you have many courses related to Biofield Design. And here we are giving you the possibility to get in just one access all these courses. So this is a great possibility that you can have, right? So these courses, you can get them separ separately. I hope I spoke right. And then you can get this. But the thing is, you can get the Platinum Access that we call Platinum Access with all these courses. So you will have the complete green building courses let me just show the website of the Planet Access. This is the website. I will share with you guys as well if you want to take a look on that. So I will share the, the link for the Planet Access here on the, on, the, on the chat, okay? And here you can see the courses that you're going to receive. So you can read that, you can see really everything that you're going to receive. These are the main courses, and here are the smaller courses that we have as well. And then we have the, all these possibilities here. So complete, com complete green building courses. We have this bi-weekly live master classes that we do. The Green Hero Community, there is our community. The PDF materials in every class that we do. The complete content portal. So we have this. And this is the pricing, right? So usually the price is $997. And we today we have this pricing of $497. So this is a possibility for you to get today. So let me go back to the mind map. And every course is you have the certificate. The investment today is this price here. So all these courses you can find with this very affordable price. And immediately you can get access to this, okay? So uh, you, you just make your purchase and you have complete access to all these courses. Okay, guys, could you understand this? If you have any questions, we are here to help you with this. I just presented very quickly here the courses, but I suggest you that you take a look in every of these courses here. So when you go to our Platinum Access, you can see these courses here, right? You can take a look on these courses and you can go also to our courses page. 
here you have this, the main courses available and you can go there and see each course separately because I think it's important that you see every one of them separate and see, okay, this is nice, this is a, a good course, very comprehensive and to get a complete access to all these courses, it's a fantastic possibility for everyone. So this is it and if you have any questions, you can ask right away, okay? And guys, we are going to proceed with the second part of this class here, right? We're going to proceed with this three parts in the next class. We're going to schedule this for uh, not this next Thursday, the other Thursday. We are going to have the second part of this class, okay? So this is it. And if you have any questions, usually we have the most common questions, right? So you can ask your questions here, but I can bring the, the most common questions. Okay, will I be able to do it, for example? This is a, something that you can ask. So my suggestion is enter by yourself, take a look on the courses. You have a 15 day guarantee. So if you want to take a look yourself and see if you are able to make it, we, we can say, okay, everyone, it, we make uh, very easy to follow courses. We give all the feedback. We give the, the resources, the PDFs, and all those things. But I think the best way to really see if it's going to work for you is enter. Make your purchase, purchase, enter. And if it's not for you, if you feel that it's not for you, you just ask for your refund, and we will happily, uh, you know, give your refund without, without any issues. Because... This is uh, what we feel about things. We want to have people at your green learning with us for a long period, right? So if you are just going to purchase something and not, not going to be with us, you know, it's not a good relationship in my opinion. So it's nice to have everyone here together, learning and evolving together. It's nice to see, for example, our first students from Portuguese language, now they are uh, you know, making consultancies all, all around the country and in English, it is, this is happening as well. So it's important that we have this long term rela relationship with us and you at Chair Green. So this is our main goal. And do I need it now? I think it's your um, it's your call, right? If you understand that sustainability and biophilic design is something important to you, you need to apply this, those stretches in your practice. I think this is something very nice that you can get, right? And if you start now, what benefits can you get in short, medium, and long term? I think, uh, as we were telling, right, sustainable design is very important to understand all those strategies to put into practice. The commercial sector is requiring it. Uh, so if you want to work with, you know, the best companies, you need to understand those strategies because they are requiring it and these guys are ruling the game. So. It's important that you, you know, stay on, uh, you know, in, in tune with the, the, the new times that we are having in this world, right? We are here working with this for so many years and we just see those things growing, growing and growing. When we, we started in 2016, we had a complete different, you know, uh, landscape. Now we have something much more exciting, in my opinion. So this is something that I suggest you guys to make. Guys, do you have any questions? Just, just ask me in the chat, okay? And we can keep going. Let's keep going here. Important to say, guys, related to the contents, the Biophilic Design Blueprint, related to this class is the course that will be more related to what you want to maybe do, right? If you got interested, related on biofield design on the on our course related to biofield design you will understand all those strategies in much more detail so we bring all those strategies in lots of detail and you can really understand everything related to this behind the scenes of biofield design we bring some reports that we have done also in the past we we show this behind the scenes so this is a great possibility for everyone who wants to enter at our world of sustainable design, biophilic design, and this is the thing. Petra, you are welcome. It's very nice to have you um, old. Uh, I, I'm telling you old, right? Uh, I don't know how, how we, what better word for old is 
you know well, yeah our, our old fellows right we could we could long time friends yes and you are much better than me with these words so it's nice to have uh, you guys here with us and let's keep together with this learnings related to sustainable and biophilic design okay guys so this is it for today and we will if you have any questions you can call us in our email and this is something that we can keep going and learning and improving right so once again i will just share the the link for the platinum access here in the chat you can get this and catherine asked what do you mean by sustainability in this context sustain the clean air act and net zero pollution targets by introducing biophilic design into architectural spaces this is a connection between two things right sometimes biophilic design can improve those possibilities for example you can bring plants in your space that will reduce glare related to natural light for example these are possibilities you can use plants as a shading device you can use plants to reduce acoustic reverberation right plants are very good for reverberation re re uh, reduction so you find these connections because plants brings by this feelings of biophilia but it can improve acoustics it can improve for example thermal comfort when you add this plants uh, outside your your space so when you start understanding these connections this is something very nice right when you can bring these possibilities so this is something that i i wanted to to show here but of course we need to study every strategy calmly in detail and that's why we have created this content portal for you guys okay petra nice nice to have you yeah you you are with us i think since 2020 right so this is very nice and this is it guys any more questions i will drink a coffee here and if you have any questions i'm here to to help you i need to save my voice because we have a portuguese class in a few minutes in 40 in 40 uh, 45 minutes or something hey Kinu, you are welcome always very nice to to have you with me thank you man thank you so much and keep watching us live guys we are always creating i'm i'm now creating some contents related to i want to be more you know this live events that i make daily i try to be you know more free to to see some things that i'm studying some researches and to spread the conversation i think this is very nice to create this live community i'm making this this uh let me just drag this i'm creating this live events is it's five 30 UTC this is the time that I'm creating this live events so if you want to join you are welcome and Peter you asked me which software I'm using to make my drawings right so I'm I'm we use a blend of softwares let me try to share my screen with you here just one second then then I can share this many people ask this so it will be something that I will just bring here so here i have my ipad right i will just reduce the the screen so you can see that so this is my ipad right the the, the screen here you can see the the drawings that i make right the many drawings that we create here and this is my sobrinha is nephew sammy sobrinha, sobrinha. Oh yeah, my niece, yeah. This is my niece drawing. She draw on a cat. <laughs> she got my iPad to draw. She always draws cat. And here you can see my my drawing. So this is the biophilic design. Let me just remove something here. I have a a filter that I need to remove. Yeah. 
So here you can see this drawing, right? So I usually create many layers with Procreate. Procreate is the software that I use. And here you can see the drawing, right? And we have this many layers. For example, I can remove those layers. I can just turn this off. And we have many layers and sub layers. Inside of each layer, we have this. So for example, this fish, fish thing here, I can just, you know, uh, turn this off, turn this off, turn this off, turn this off, or turn the entire thing off, this off, the table. So all the details we need to really make this, this is in a very, in a very artisanal way, let's say. And here I just bring this, so, You can see this, you can see this, and then I turn this on. And here we have a, this one here. So this is what we do. So the animations, we bring this to, to, to our video editor. So this is how we do things. We need to bring this into a video editor and then we edit all those things to really show people the, um, the behind the scenes of all those things. So we bring, for example, let me try to bring here the, we are here, right? Just to, let me show you some, something else here. Very quickly. It's opening my video editor. Usually, uh, the last one's Poliana. Poliana is here as well. Uh, she, say hello, Poliana. <laughs> so Poliana is here, and she is developing this the, the animations on the video editor. But this project, especially, I have here. So I will try to to bring the the video editor here for you guys to see. So here is my video editor. And here you can see all those layers. So here's the complete drawing, right? The complete animation. This thing here is the, is the complete animation here. And then you move back. And then you start decomposing the drawing. So here are all the frames. We need to add the frames. And while it's proceeding, you can find those animations moving and evolving and we need to put a, put a time on each one of that to really make that possible so this is how we do things this is the, the overall so when you see a drawing please press like guys because there is lots of work and we are trying to bring really our best in our in our channels right when we you see this on instagram is a 30 second, 15 second picture, but this is requires a lot. But we want to make, I think it's, it's nice to, to try to bring the, you know, I, I'm not telling that we are making something like the state of art or, or of anything, but we try our best actually, right? We, we really try our best to show in the most, most clear way some concepts about sustainable design, but because I think the most clear way that we can express ourselves people will move more into this field and we can, you know, we can reduce carbon footprint by making the, a good drawing that is a good animation that people can understand. They, they can see, okay, sustainable design is nice. I will enter this field and they can reduce carbon footprint. They can make people happier in this space. So I always like to think that, okay, sometimes I think I, sometimes I feel that I'm wasting time when I'm making my drawings, you know, Okay, I'm wasting too much time and I have so many other important things to do. And a consultancy for a client, we have something, some deadlines here to write to, to, to accomplish, right? So, but I understand that this drawing is not just a drawing, it's something much more important and it's not just something that people are passing on Instagram. Maybe if we can find ways to capture people's attention Right, because it's hard to call attention in social media, right? We have many crazy people out there in, 
in you know talking about Lamborghinis and you know people fancy people at the beach or something like this so we need to call attention and if you are, we are just academic boring people on social media talking about sustainable design they're very you know oh sustainability we have many you know academic people here we we won't get too far we need to enter and really capture the masses right so we we try our best here maybe this contents will evolve we are always trying new things but this is the way that i feel that we are expressing the most honest and you know a more appealing way at the same time and showing the importance of that and guys if you want to join the platinum access is another way that you support us so when you enter in the platinum access and you are supporting our work it's you know we can keep going with social media because sometimes we think okay man we we can just do consultations uh as consultants because we are sustainability consultants here at Green, and we could just you know talk to clients person per, in, in person close some deals and just do this or maybe just use google to capture clients and develop this work but we truly believe that we need to move people in a social level so uh when you purchase a course from you green you are supporting the entire movement you are making me draw in a better way or something like it. So it's very uh, nice this exchange of energy. So we are very pleased, guys, for all your support, uh, especially people who are since the beginning, Petra, Sonia. Sonia is uh, someone who we, we you know, we, we, we say really thank you because it's uh, people who are supporting us and make this dream alive right sometimes it's not that easy you know sustainable design is not something that is you know rainbows all every day it's something that sometimes it's hard to to make so i just wanted to to say this to you guys guys so thank you so much for oh i'm sorry where is me oh i'm here <laughs> so yeah i put by the ipad in my in front of me so thank you so much guys for being part of that and uh Nenad, you are awesome as well so thank you guys thank you for for being part of that i'm very happy to to make this cause with every one of you okay we have the portuguese i need to say my voice a little bit so thank you so much for joining and in two weeks we keep going with another biophysical design class with the last three concepts and we are going to bring some surprises you can be sure so thank you so much have a great day everyone